Welcome to ITK Bar Camp. Today we are going to continue our introduction to the use of command line arguments in C++. So let's start by opening uh, another file. We include the header files that we need for uh, interacting with the stream, so we are able to print commands in the screen. And we also include the headers that will help us to um, use the function that convert string characters into numbers, like integers and floats. So that's CSTDlib. And we start with the typical main function. Um, we promise that the main function is going to return an integer. And it's going to take as arguments the number, an integer that is the number of command line arguments that you type plus one, and that plus one being the name of the executable. And then the second argument is going to be an array of strings, so it pointers to characters, and that's traditionally called argv. You could have used any other names for uh, these variables argv and argc, but these are uh, traditional, traditionally used names. We est uh, enclose the body of the function between curly brackets, so we can uh, already put the opening and closing brackets, and because we're promising that the function is going to return an integer, we can do that right away. We, at the end, say uh, we're returning zero. Uh, zero usually means good news. So no, uh, we are indicating that no error happened during the execution of the program. This is the optimistic way to start your, your code. Um, and then we are going to, um, let's assume that this program, what it does is to take an uh, integer as an argument, a string that will be converted to an integer and put it on the screen. So we are going to call this uh, the number of cows variable. And what we're going to do is to take the argument one. Uh, remember that the array of arguments is going to start in zero. Zero is the name of the program. Um, so actually we can still do that explicitly here. The executable name is the first element of this array. And then the element sub1 is going to be the first command line argument that we pass to the program. And then we just simply print this to the screen. Okay, so uh, let's try compiling this. We save the program and we invoke the uh, C++ compiler. So in G++, we pass the name of the file as an argument as, and we indicate that we want to uh, produce an executable called CLA2, command line arguments too. Okay, so the compiler is unhappy. We did something uh, Bronx is telling us about invalid conversion from um, a string to int, and this is because I didn't finish that line. So let's open the editor again, and uh, I missed to add here the a to i function that is going to convert this string to an integer. We save the code, and we compile it again. This time the compiler is happy, and we can execute the program by calling CLA2, and let's see that the number of cows is 42. Okay, so that's um, the expected use of the code. Now, of course, it's always possible that somebody will call this program without knowing what to expect as arguments, and uh, it can easily happen that somebody just called the program this way. And what they are going to get in that case is a segmentation fault. Uh, the source of this segmentation fault is the fact that we are accessing an element of an array that doesn't exist. If we open the code again, uh, we are going to see that this argv array, in practice, is only going to have um, one element, because we are calling the executable with, without arguments, so uh, we'll have only one uh, element in that array, and that element will be the name of the executable. Uh, to make this more explicit, we can add here the number of elements. So we print the variable argc. 
compile it again and we execute it. So when we call it this way, uh, this is what uh, the program is receiving, only one argument. When we call it with 42, uh, it's receiving two. Again, the first one of, of those arguments is the name of the executable and the second is going to be the actual number. Now, because you, you want to prevent this type of segmentation fault, um, the traditional way to do it is to make sure that you never attempt to array uh, to, to access an element of an array that doesn't exist. So we should be checking for the size of that array. Now, before we got there, um, if we didn't know what the source of the problem was, uh, we could have investigated this by using the debugger. Um, to do that, we just need to add the dash g option to the compilation and that will allow us to introduce debugging code into the executable and then instead of executing or, or running the program directly we are going to do it through gdb so uh, we open gdb with cla gdb is the debugger um, uh, for gcc and then we run the program form here so when we execute it we are going to get again the segmentation fault but this time we have the advantage that uh, we are going to know where the program is failing so if we do list uh, so backtrace is going to tell us uh, where the program is failing is telling us that the, the place where it's failing is in this line number 10 uh, so we can the debugger and then open the program in that line which will indicate that uh, we are failing in this line all right so that's uh, simply a an, an way to find the line where the actual um, segmentation fault is happening in this case it's trivial because we have a very small program but if you were working with a larger uh, program this is a typical way of uh, locating the place where you may be accessing a pointer that has not been allocated or you are trying to uh, access an element that is beyond the range of an array. Okay, so to deal with this problem, uh, what you traditionally want to do is that in at the very beginning of your program you're going to verify if you're getting a node argument. Uh, so we do this by checking if the uh, arc C is larger in this case uh, than 2. We want at least, sorry, We want one or two, so we can do explicitly You can go um, either way, you could enclose your code in an if that verifies that you have enough arguments or you could go the um, negative way, actually let's do it the negative way so saying that you, if you have less than two arguments then you are not going to continue because you don't have enough information for what your program is expecting so in this case, we're going to send an, an, a message to the standard error output. Notice that for the other mes messages, we have been using uh, the C out stream. And for error messages, you want to use the CR stream. Uh, both of them, by default, get sent to the screen. Um, the difference is that if you're redirecting the output to a file or you're piping it to other commands, um, and those are the standard procedures in, in Unix and Linux, uh, then the uh, error messages will be separated, those will still appear in the screen and you can redirect them independently so you can send the standard output to uh, a particular file and you can send the collection of error messages to a different file so it is convenient to differentiate between the two um, so anything that you consider to be an error message, an error message um, the correct practice is to send it to the standard error output and what we want to say here is that we have missing arguments. And very important, then, because we have missing arguments, we don't want to continue. We want to quit the program at this point. So we are going to return, and we are going to return with bad news. So uh, 1, as opposed to returning with 0. 0 is what we return where everything is good at the end of the execution of the program. In this case, we are indicating that something went wrong. And um, the caller of this command will be able to check this return value and maybe act upon that uh, condition of error. Now notice that missing arguments is not really telling uh, the user what to do, so it's usually a good idea to do something like adding a message that says, you know, what is the expected usage of this program? 
and what you expect to do is that it should be used as calling the executable so we know that the name of the executable is rv0 and then complementing that with a number that would be the number of cows we can explain here that it's an integer okay so uh, let's try this again We compile our code and now we are going to call it again. So this time when we call it with the number 42, we obtain the expected result. We have two arguments, the name of the executable, the correct number of 42. If somebody forgets to put that number, then they are going to get uh, a friendly message. So it's telling us that there are missing arguments and that you should call it this way. So this is a more useful message for uh, the user of the program. It prevents the frustration of having to discover that, you know, having to go through the code and reverse engineer what the arguments should have been. Something that we can improve uh, here is that it will be convenient to actually say that there was an error. So that usually catch the eye of the color. So we can do this more explicit. Um, you can imagine that if we were producing a lot of output in the screen, it would be more convenient to have something that uh, you could uh, search for, you could grab for the word error and see if something went wrong during the process. Okay, so when we call it with the correct number of arguments, we get the standard um, messages that we expect from the program. And um, if you um, forget to provide the correct number of arguments, we get the friendly message that indicates that there is a problem and how you can go around um, using the program in the correct way. Okay, so that concludes our, our session for today. Um, thank you for listening.